I think it's working. Microphone check. Testing. Sounds like it's working. So we're at the National Cathedral. And we're going to cross the street momentarily, I think. There we go. Hmm. I wonder if I should use my other phone for the periscope. This is a conundrum. Too many devices. Maybe I should just go live and tell you what I'm seeing. It's more fun to chat, though. Uh. What to do? What to do? Uh, we'll just keep going with this. For now. My hand is cold, though. Let these cars go by. I am going to cross, but I just put that there. So you're at the National Cathedral here in Washington, D.C. This tent is actually a classroom. The uh, private schools have gone to outdoor classes to minimize COVID exposure. Pretty cold, I imagine. Ah. I wanted to get your comments. Hmm, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to do this. Whoa, it's cold. So I have to figure out a way to get this live streaming at the same time that I'm filming. Ah, chilly. This is always the windy corner. My kids complain about it when they come up from classes. They go around this corner and they're always like, ah! So the cathedral police truck, it's parked here pretty much every day, just so you can't get a perfect picture of the cathedral without a car in front of it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell my cop friends that. Whoa, I can't wait to get to the other side of this building. Hopefully the wind will die down. It's actually an interesting lawsuit with the architect, the art, the, the artist who designed that structure got in a lawsuit with like a movie company that used it in The Devil's Advocate with Al Pacino as this as the devil. And that that sculpture kind of appeared in the movie without his permission. So there was a big lawsuit about that. Oh boy, it's much warmer here without the wind. So much nicer. I think we're gonna take a slight pause to get wired up for Periscope, which is gonna be going on one of the phones here. Ah. And we lost our glove, because it's just one of those kind of days. <clears throat> Next time, wire yourself up before you get in the car, before you go out of the house. Uh, guess what? Guess who needs two hands right now? There we go. So the wireless 
the Osmo is using a wireless mic and my Periscope phone is going to use a wired mic. So let's go into the Bishop's Garden here. Oh man, it is icy back here. Woo! That is unfun. Oh man, they gotta clean this up. This is dangerous. Danger, Will Robinson! Danger! Danger, Will Robinson! So, as I mentioned in one of the other broadcasts, this is where my kids came to learn the lessons of the Garden of Eden. They came into this garden. The teachers gave them three rules not to be disobeyed. And then secretly they timed the class to see how long it took for them to disobey the rules. Then they reported that back to their school saying, okay, this, this class took two minutes and 37 seconds to break through rules. And they have this sort of running database of all the classes at the school to determine who is the most disciplined, most egregious, based on their Garden of Eden times. I call this Hagrid's Hut. Oh, the cathedral, it's back here. So this is my, <laughs> this is my neighborhood, yeah? <laughs> I live here. That's kind of ridiculous. Kind of ridiculous. Mm. It is covered with ice here. So I'm being really, really careful trying to get out of this. So we're gonna start up a periscope here, I think. And this is gonna be our mega embassy trip. I think that's what we're gonna call this. The mega embassy special. Because honestly, I get tired of showing you guys the same things. And there's so much to see in Washington anyway. Uh, okay, there we go. Plug that in. Mega. Embassy. Mega Embassy Tour in Washington, D.C. Hashtag travel. Alrighty, there you go. We're ready to go live with Periscope Twitter. So let me get that started and put my glove on. Hey guys, welcome to Washington, D.C where we're on a mega embassy tour. And we are actually, we are actually double fisted today as I have a brand new DJI Osmo Pocket. DJI Osmo Pocket is a gimbal based uh, pocket 4K recorder. And I'll be putting up that video on my YouTube channel uh, when I get home from this exciting adventure. Whoa, what's going on? That looks off. Huh. Did that just do what it did, thought it did? There we go. Have they taken down the fences from Inauguration Day? No, they have not. In fact, if you look at my YouTube channel, Penguin 6, I was uh, filming the fences last night when I was detained by the U.S. Capitol Police. Hey, kid, what are you filming? Fences? Why are you filming them? Because I'm doing a Twitter. You're live on Twitter. Uh, what? <laughs> Truth be told, though, the cops were actually quite polite, quite professional. And we uh, got through that situation with a minimum amount of hassle. This is freaky on me. Whew. So interestingly, on my DJI Osmo, the image is reversed. So on the periscope, there is a car on the left, but on my Osmo screen, the car is on the right. I'm not really sure why that is. It is a bit tricky, trippy, <laughs> I should say. 
My God, my kids can't be out here playing. So I've had a rather insane week. I'm doing pretty good. This has been probably the craziest week for me ever in social media. Um, just, just insane. As you guys know, I go for walks around the city and have for, God, years, years from Hong Kong to Tokyo to New York here. Done live streams from pretty much all over. But the last couple of weeks, my live streams have been picked up by those with a interest in the current political situation in Washington. And I mean picked up with a fervor. So we've had a tremendous amount of traffic for our walks. Um, one of my videos has been viewed a half a million times. Just insane. Just insane. So uh, I've been dealing with that. Trying to... Uh, trying to show people things they'd like to see hopefully answering some of their questions I know there's a lot of rumors going around and I, and I kind of said to myself if I show these people if I show all the people what I see maybe they'll come to their own conclusion about what they hear you know I'm not gonna tell anyone oh no that's wrong this is this but I'm gonna show them what it is and show them what I've seen in the past and then let them make their own decision I think it's working pretty well you know I don't want to force anything down someone's throat, but if you just take a look at what you see, you'll, you'll see what you see. So that's what we've been up to. Hey, thanks, Bobby. Uh, my boy, I have a boy in high school and a boy in middle school. And this is actually, their school is over there, actually. Um, their school is over there, but today they are at home today was their home day tomorrow though they've got to go in person the children are tested every two weeks for covid so i uh, just got their latest test results back and they're fine so today we're going to do a mega embassy tour this is going to be the biggest embassy tour i've ever taken you guys on we're going to try to see as many embassies as we can before our battery dies which should be fun. Have I been tested? No, I have not. Now, interestingly, when this first happened last year, last January 2020, um, I actually had some symptoms. I had a fever, cough, stuff like that. So we spoke to a doctor and we had a family member who had just been to China. And they're like, well, were they in Wuhan? I'm like, well, no, but they were in China. It's like, oh, we can't give you a test unless they were in Wuhan. And we're, we were just like, that's stupid. And they're like, yeah, we agree. <laughs> but that was the testing situation at the time. So I was not tested. Uh, I recovered pretty quickly. It was just like a day or two kind of thing. So it could have just been the flu or something. But I always had this doubt in the back of my head. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Kostov, how you doing? So I don't know if I should get like an antibody test or if I should just go ahead and get a regular PCR test. I will be tested this summer when I go to Hong Kong. Hong Kong will require a test before I get on a plane and then I have to get a test on the way back too. I'm going to be doing a lot of tests this summer. Unless I get the vaccine. Yeah, it was right on the edge. It was right on the edge of when the outbreak was developing. So, there is a Canadian embassy, but it is next to the U.S. Capitol building. It's one of the few embassies that's out of place, so to speak, and is downtown rather than up here. How many embassies are there? At last count that I saw, 177 embassies. I should note that some embassies are nothing more than an office building, like a, a, an office in a giant office building. <laughs> Other embassies are gorgeous structures, as we're about to see. So this video will be on YouTube later tonight, hopefully in higher quality resolution. There is a Canadian embassy. There's an embassy for pretty much every country we have diplomatic relations with. And our first embassy is right here on the left. 
Now, I was having a big debate recently about whether this was an embassy or whether this was an ambassador's residence, but this is the Iraqi embassy. So this is Iraq's embassy, and uh, they have a consulate building downtown. I, I sometimes edit for YouTube, um, like personally identifying information that might come up. But generally, generally, I just put this right up onto YouTube. So embassy number two, this is actually two and three, because this is the embassy of Cote, oh, no, not Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, what is the embassy? Cape Verde. This is the Cape Verde embassy. But it's also the embassy for Timor, I think like East Timor and Cape Verde. I want to find a way to put this pocket in my pocket so I can just make videos without having to like hold it out. this way so up there on the right is Florida house um I think so hang on that's the uh, vice president's house up there currently under renovation uh, so it's unoccupied at the moment um, you know there are a lot of like state house organizations that have like a like a governor's representative and stuff like that There you see the vice president's house is. Um, you can actually Google, it's called One Observatory Circle. Hey, they're actually working on the chimney. Can you see that? I don't know if I can zoom with the DJI, but I can zoom with the uh, periscope here. So they are working on the chimney there. And that is what we were told was happening that they had a chimney liner needed to be replaced. So I need to get that up onto my channel. A lot of people have been asking. This is the Norwegian ambassador slash embassy. Ah. I just... Yeah, yeah, you can't go inside. You can't go inside a secure area like that without a background check. So the construction is underway. Alrighty. Oh, White House. Yeah, to get into the vice president is a full-on security check. There's actually, right over there is the entrance to the Naval Observatory, and they have a full security check. Let's just go ahead and cross. You have to, like, give them your social security number. They do a background check, everything like that. Okay, so we saw Norway. This is number four or five. This is the Vatican's embassy, the Holy See. The Vatican has an embassy in Washington. It's a pretty big embassy, to be honest. I should just get a bike. <laughs> be a lot faster with a bike, wouldn't it? I don't know if I can go to pay respects. I would actually like to, but I don't know if I'm allowed. This is the Finland Embassy, the Embassy of Finland. I paid respects to the previous officers who were shot because I was working on Capitol Hill at the time, and they had a ceremony for them. But uh, this one, I think because of COVID, it's, it's limited to like law officers and political people only. So there's the Embassy of Finland. It's actually a pretty cool embassy. I'm really having a, a mental rush because the DJI Osmo, the Osmo's um, image is reversed. So when I'm sitting here walking, everything looks backwards, which is kind of freaky.
Do, do, do. So that's the observatory. It's got two fences out today still. I'm uh, not sure when they're going to take it out. Actually, I think they might delay a bit because it's so mucky and muddy. And it took like a big lift crane. There are like, well, you can see there's like tire tracks all up and down here where the cranes had to like lift in those big heavy blocks. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, it's cold. Now, I normally, honestly, if this was a normal day, I would not be walking. I would be at home in my gym on my treadmill watching a movie. But because of COVID, I can't really use the gym. The only thing I can do is go out for hikes. So I've been going out for hikes, even though the weather has been kind of crap. Yeah, there's scooters around, but there are not a lot of scooters in this neighborhood, which kind of sucks. When I get downtown, I can easily find a scooter and spin back home. But when I'm up here, I'm kind of on my own. I don't do many driving scopes. It's just too hard to like read and uh, drive. What's that? That was my, <laughs> that was my glove. Oh, this is better. So we've just done a switch. The Osmo is now in my left hand and the uh, phone is in my right. The goal is eventually to get the Osmo clipped onto my coat so I don't really have to uh, do anything. It's going to be like a body cam, you know? But uh, for right now, we are still figuring it all out. Yeah, I like to pick the kids up with a scooter and be the cool dad. As my friend once said, is like, like, what are your sons doing? Oh, my boys have got a bunch of scooters and they're driving around like a motorcycle gang of nerds. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's a pretty apt description. Up ahead, we actually have two embassies back to back. You get kind of a twofer here. There's a bunch of deer around here somewhere. I'll be in Hong Kong for about a month, month and a half. Maybe two. I haven't quite decided. I do have to sort that out soon. Ugh. So you're looking at the British Embassy, and up the hill and back a bit is the New Zealand Embassy. Well, you can really see that. Yeah, they're really pretty sus in DC. I don't really like that they're so suspicious and tense. I mean, honestly, if this had been the summertime, they would never even have thought to stop me. Why? Because there's like a bajillion, I mean, literally a bajillion people taking pictures. You know, I would just have blended in. But because it's wintertime, I'm all alone. And of course, because of the recent incidents, I kind of stand out. Kind of sus. It's amazing how the word sus has entered our vocabulary since everybody plays Among Us. It did change so much, January 6th. The question is, are we going to change back? Are we going to go back? Now, the Capitol Security Department is already calling for a fence. To be honest, though, they've been calling for a fence for 20 years. Now, the Congress has resisted that, <laughs> saying the people's house should be open to the people. I think there are some, I think that actually has some bipartisan appeal. There are members on both sides who believe that. No, I just had a black coat on. Oh, there's the deer. Can you see him? I told you there are deer here. There's usually a bunch of them. He's just nibbling on a tree. There's usually like four or five of these guys. Hello, deer. Oh, he's got, it's a buck. He's got some uh, antlers. 
one twos and I'm not going to mess with it. There's usually like several others though. I'm surprised he's all by himself. Maybe I might be surprised. There's the uh, former British ambassador's house. They said that some of the deer have like wasting disease. I think there's another one in here, maybe. Over there is Churchill statue. Um, I haven't passed, I'm gonna pass a bridge shortly. I haven't passed a bridge yet, if that's what, uh, there was a, there's a creek down to my left. So this is Nelson Mandela and he's in front of the South African embassy. No, there's no bridge, just back there, um, it's just a road, but down to my left is a valley. Rock Creek Park is down to my left. So maybe it looked like a bridge, but it's not. <laughs> oh, a little bridge. Oh, that little bridge. I know what you're talking about. Oh, that is a, um, that's a memorial to a poet. That is like the, I can't even remember his name. It's like by the deer. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a memorial there for this like famous poet. Gabasi or something like that. I can't remember. If you watch the YouTube, I'll put his name up on the YouTube later because I can't remember. That's the Bolivian embassy. <coughs> this is the former Iranian embassy. It's now empty. Maintained by the State Department, I found out. They like make sure it doesn't rot. Uh, kind of from Hadesi. I've been here a long time. There's the Brazilian embassy. I lived in Hong Kong 10 years and I recently moved back to DC. I lived in D.C. like 20 years, then I moved to Hong Kong for 10 years, and now I'm back in D.C. and I'm really confused. This is the old Iranian ambassador's residence. During the days of the Shah, this used to be the place to be for the trendy diplomatic corps. That's the Brazilian ambassador's place. So the Brazilian ambassador has a very short walk to the Brazilian embassy. Not a bad life if you can get it. Uh, up that hill behind Brazil is Denmark and Sri Lanka. Uh, also the Polish ambassador's house and Hillary Clinton's house. So, but I'm not going to go up that hill because it's just, I've got a lot of stuff to cover today. And I want to show you. Population is about 700,000 people. Try something. That's the Italian embassy over there. I'm gonna try something with this Osmo again. There we go. It's kind of cold, but as I walk, it gets a lot better. You can eat outdoors, yes, in D.C. In fact, I think you can have, like, a small number of people indoors. So there's the Italian embassy. Uh, let's see what houses we have here. I have this, like, list I was going to pull out. Yeah, limited outdoor dining. this a bit, putting our gloves back on. Hey, welcome to Periscope. We're now going over Rock Creek Parkway on a very big bridge.
is Rock Creek Parkway. It was a great app. Do the embassies have cool, they have some unique art, but I don't think they have many rare items. Like, I don't think embassies hold any national treasures, for example. But they might have, like, artwork from famous historical people from their countries. But, uh, national treasures, not so much. Yeah, well, you can take a test, right? You can take an antibody test. So that is the Spanish government's mission to the Organization of American States. So that's like the representative office for the OAS. This is the Islamic Center. It's uh, where a lot of the Arab Muslim nations will come for prayers. A lot of their staff will come here. It's pretty quiet right now. It might be closed. I'm not sure if it is closed. You know, now that I think about it, I haven't really seen any people here in a long time. <laughs> the French Embassy actually has like a French movie theater. They show movies and they have plays and lectures and other stuff for French speakers. So I think I'm on their mailing list. I get like little emails every now and then. Like, so-and-so, some actress is visiting from France and you can come meet her or something like that. It's kind of cool. Okay, back there, Barack Obama's house, the Russian spy center on the right. We saw those the other day. And now we start really getting into Embassy Center. Let's play Name That Flag. It's a game I like to play. Okay, where are we at? This is Belize. Embassy of Belize. That's the Turkish embassy. Turks. Oh, that's Turkish ambassador, maybe. That's the Indian embassy. And that's the Japanese embassy. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe he's going to move to D.C. Just run the Washington Post full time. So that's like the Indian Chancery. It's not the main embassy. The main embassy is down the street. This is the Japanese embassy, though. Yeah, the Turkish embassy. It used to be downtown, but then they moved over here. And now they turned the old embassy into the ambassador's residence. Hmm. Nope, North Korea does not have it. But the Korean embassy is actually just next to Japan. This what Lesotho? Yeah, this is Lesotho, Embassy of Lesotho. Canada is down by the capital. And then over there is the Japanese one. The countries can maintain their embassies. It's the responsibility of those countries to maintain it, not us. Though we do provide security for the embassies, then they provide security for us. Exterior building security only. So this Robert Taft used to live here. Is that Senator Taft or Robert Taft? Or... Uh, we missed this light. We'll go behind this guy. I think Robert Taft was the Senator, right? And the President was a different Taft. That's Korea. Yeah. 
Here is the Venezuelan ambassador's house. A thousand courage on JFK's book. Over there is the Korean embassy, South Korea. This is a tiny little embassy. This is the Marshall Islands. Marshall Islands out in the Pacific. I believe they're a free association with the U.S., which means we do their defense and foreign affairs, and they handle their domestic policy. I'm not sure about that one, though. They may be fully independent. Over there is the Mexican diplomatic post for the Organization of American States. So that's like their, their mission to the OAS. And what do we got here? This is Zambia's embassy currently being renovated. A bit of a mess. They've been renovating it for like a year. A lot of the embassies are currently being renovated. That red brick house is the ambassador of Algeria's personal house. The Algerian ambassador lives there. And that's Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. And that's their embassy there. That's a new embassy. Hmm. I thought that was Algeria, but maybe it's connected to Cote Ivory Coast. Maybe they changed. Maybe they sold that, because it looks like it's connected. Uh, this is Chad, Embassy of Chad. Embassy of Chad, and then the next one isn't the Dutch Embassy, but it's the Dutch Ambassador's house. And on the right-hand side is Jeff Bezos' house, and Woodrow Wilson's former house, where Woodrow Wilson used to live. So that is a Malawi's embassy, Malawi. And that is the United Arab Emirates Cultural Center. And we got a big helicopter coming somewhere. There he is. Black Hawk, President's helicopter fleet. Uh, this is Cameroon's embassy. This is called Embassy Row. Uh, it wouldn't be Biden. It'd usually be two if it was Biden. This is known as Embassy Row, yeah? That's the Korean Cultural Affairs Division. Uh, that's that Kyrgyzstan? That one little there, Kyrgyzstan, I think. Or Kyrgyz Republic, no, they're over here. And then this is Croatia. So many embassies down here. This is the old Pakistan embassy. No, not necessarily two. I mean, if they're two of the H60 or the SH3s or whatever those are, then those are likely presidential transport. I didn't report that one to the helicopter game. I don't have enough hands today. But if you follow helicopters of D.C., they uh, track all the helicopters in D.C. This is the Haitian embassy. This used to be the Haitian embassy. It used to be China's embassy. China used to be in this one. It's called Copter Spotter. It's run by Helicopters of D.C., a Twitter account. And we try to track all the helicopters in D.C. for fun. This is the Chilean embassy, Chile. 
that I believe over there is the Greek uh, defense minister attache's office or the Greek culture center there's so many Greek buildings around here okay this is Egypt right here on the corner Egypt Philippines and then Vietnam well, this this is like this whole circle is embassies so this is Egypt and that's the Philippines looks like it's getting renovated and next to the Philippines you see Vietnam oh it's Kenya that's getting renovated and next to Vietnam is Kenya now Kenya is getting work done over there is a Korean cons consulate Latvia Turkish ambassador truck is loud Romania Ireland and then the main Greek embassy is over here on this side so let's just keep going <coughs> I don't know what flag that is there's a red blue and yellow flag uh, let's check those. There's two embassies right over here. We'll check those out just to add them to our, our tally. <sighs> our, is that Armenia? I think that is Armenia. So, yeah, this is the embassy of Armenia. I, was, well, I knew it was around here somewhere. That Slovakia flag is blue or something. That was Armenia. This is, is this another like Cameroon? Oh no, this is this weird flag with a bird in it or something. Um, Miramar. Oh wow, they're busy. That's the Burma Miramar embassy. This is Argentina, it looks like. No, Guatemala. Embassy of Guatemala Chancery. Oh, uh, there's a white flag. Is that Cyprus? I think that is Cyprus over there. Who's this? Huh. Niger. Embassy of Niger. Is this like Mozambique's flag? I can't remember. No, Zambia. Zambia must have moved here temporarily while their main embassy is being renovated. There's a Brazilian flag, somewhat related to, not like the Brazilian embassy, but maybe like a diplomatic residence. Is that Costa Rica? I think that's Costa Rica down there. Oh, let's go down the street. We missed a couple, but we'll see them. And there's one here too. This is like trick-or-treating, you know, you keep looking for the lights that are on at the house because they've got candy. Here you just look for the foreign flags. Uh, it's kind of mucky, muddy today. I don't know how clean that is. This is Argentina. But this isn't the embassy. It's too small. This has got to be like the diplomat's residence or something. Ambassador's house. Hello. Hello, Turkey. We just went past the Turkish ambassador's house. Can I wander around? Yeah, it's a free country. Generally, it's a free country. <laughs> Republic of Botswana? No, Bulgaria. Wow, the Bulgarians are rocking. Bulgaria, Cuba. I don't know. I don't think we have relations, do we? We do have relations. I don't know where their embassy is, though. Bulgaria. Vasolevsky. If you're Bulgarian, I guess you do it. Jamaican embassy is going to come a little bit later. It's on another street. But we are going to see Jamaica today, I think. What's a blue flag with one white star? Somalia. So this is the Somali embassy. Oh, cool. This is American Men Women's Club. American News Women's Club. Interesting. This was the Estonian embassy, but I think it's being renovated. I mean, it's being like gutted. So I think they're building a new one. That's Luxembourg on the other side. That's the Turkish defense attaché's house next to Luxembourg, just over to the right there. Um, let's 
keep going down the street. Let's jaywalk across here. In case you're wondering around Massachusetts Avenue Northwest, this is generally known as Embassy Row, where almost every house is an embassy or a diplomatic mission of one sort or the other. Hello, Turkey. Yeah, one day we're going to do a spy tour of Washington. There's like a lot of famous locations. Maybe we'll do that later this week. You want to do that? We'll do a spy tour of DC and I'll show you all the spy locations. <laughs> I did a little bit of that the other day. I showed you Bill Casey's house, who was the CIA director under Reagan. I showed you uh, Wild Bill Donovan's house, the founder of the OSS, the precursor to the CIA. Those houses were in Georgetown. There are police cars that you haven't seen, but I have. Uh, they're undercover and they're moving around. But yeah, they're, they're, they're here. They're here, I assure you. I assure you they know I'm here too. Like I said, that guy again. The guy with the camera. Sorry, man. You guys want a spy tour? I'll tell you what, we're gonna, I'll work out a spy tour. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe the next day we'll do a spy tour. Booth, you know the, the guy who shot, we could go down to see like Ford's Theater maybe. That's the Society of Cincinnati. Those are descendants of colonial officers. So if your family had a colonial Revolutionary War officer, you can join the Society of Cincinnati. Now, I don't think they take militia. I think you had to be in the Continental Army. Um, a lot of people are moving to HAPS, but I'm, I'll be on HAPS, I'll be on YouTube and Twitch and wherever else I can go, Twitter. This is the Indian Embassy. There's been a lot of protests here lately. Indian farmers have come out to protest. Gandhi is here. Old guy walking who changed the nation. I'm just an old guy walking. Oh, Department of Ho Homeland Security, here they come. Homeland Security uses a Coach Guard H-60 to patrol Washington, D.C. H, is it H-860? I'm not, what is that? Uh, it's a dolphin, I can't remember what the exact code number is. I don't know if it is an H-60. Yeah, everybody's watching me. I always feel that. I did hear about Navali. Guys, did the screen just get a lot brighter for you, or did it not change? The periscope. This is the Indonesian embassy. Same, okay, because I think, oh, I know what happened. I had something in front of the light sensor, so my screen was very dark. But that was just my screen, it wasn't my camera. I see. Indonesian Embassy is pretty cool, actually. It is an amazing, it's one of the better architectural buildings of the different embassies. And then they have a more modern building in the back. Uh, tell you what, I've already forgotten. Something about me getting old. Oh, Germans. The German embassy is humongous, but it's far away. It's on the other side, the other side of uh, DC, other side of Georgetown. That's Portugal over there, Portuguese embassy. Ronaldo comes and visits. <laughs> Not really. Guten Morgen, Guten. I don't think it's morning, is it? Guten Tag. Yeah. Uh. So we got to go the other side of this circle, and then we're going to loop up a side street where there's a whole bunch of embassies. Then I'm going to take you up to my favorite house in DC, the French ambassador's house. There comes an ambulance. No, the police asked me some questions yesterday, but they were pretty cool. I don't think police have quite gotten around to the fact that there are a lot of YouTubers and live streamers who just film their walks. I mean, if you go on 
YouTube, there's almost someone live walking around just making a video. I don't quite fully get it. Periscope is good, but it's going away. So we do what we can. Hmm. I don't know what's the best to cut through the circle. Maybe to cut through the circle. There's no cars right now. Here comes those helicopters again. Oh, right over my head. Okay, let's make our way down the other side of the street. Oh, man, I gotta walk through this. Some fire, fire trucks over there, somebody must be hurt. I was stopped the other day on Capitol Hill. I'm not gonna be stopped here. I've done, there's not really anyone that bothers me here. Capitol Hill is just a bit sensitive because of January 6th. I am not even stopped at the White House. Speaking of the White House, it's just down the end of that road. Oh, there's some dude talking to talking to Jesus or something. Or talking to me, I don't know. I'm gonna bypass that dude. He seems a bit He's dressed like a Russian. He's got like a Russian army outfit. The best team, Arsenal. <laughs> I actually have an Arsenal hat on today. But Ozil has left us, Ozil has gone to Turkey. Krispy Kreme donuts. Mm. Oh, this bus wants to go. Forty-one degrees. That's actually a lot warmer than I thought it was. It wasn't that warm when I left the house. I think it's just warmer down here. Down in this part of DC, it's a bit of a heat sink. All the cement stores up some of the sun's heat. Keeps it warmer during the day than up where I live, where there's more trees, more grass, cooler temperatures. Massachusetts Avenue. Okay, eventually we're going to go over that street there where those fire trucks are, but we've got a couple embassies down here. And then we're going to loop over and catch them on the flip side. It looks like a Queens Park Rangers flag. <laughs> I don't think it's QPR. That blue flag it must be a private club. A couple embassies down here. I think we're going to try something again with this camera. Hang on a second. Okay. 
So the Osmo camera is now in my pocket, like legit in my pocket. That's the Brookings Institution. That's a like think tank. And then down here we have some embassies. I've got to do some more tests with the Osmo before I have it fully ready kitted out to uh, to do these broadcasts. Republic of Uzbekistan. That's the Uzbekistan flag. Cool. Yeah, the DJI Osmo Pocket. This is a 4K gimbal stabilized uh, recorder. It's kind of like my body camera to record what's going on. Now the goal, this is the Osmo Pocket 2. Just bought this this morning. The goal is to eventually have this as sort of a full-time body camera attached to me so I do other stuff with the phone. This is the Chilean Embassy's like consulate. Now consulate is where you go to get like paperwork and visas and stuff like that. It is very tiny. See Trinidad and Tobago as makes a couple flags down there. It does have a good stabilizer, that's what we're trying to do, but uh Colombia. Yeah, this is Colombian Embassy. And then the CBC, the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. And down here is the Trinidad and Tobago. Embassy, TNT. And who's here at the end? Red flag, white, with some sort of seal. Is this? This isn't Monaco, is it? I don't know who this was. I'll tell you in a second, though. I don't know the battery life yet. It's my first time experiencing it. Peru, that's Peru. I didn't know Peru had a thing in the middle of their flag. Uh, I thought their flag was just sort of plain. Oh, I missed the light. Okay, so now we gotta go up this street, catch up with another street full of embassies. The old, uh, so there's an old, there's like a Philippine consulate down there, I think, and the old Australian embassy is down there, but it's being torn up right now, being rebuilt. There's that other helicopter. Well, I tell you, the battery life is getting pretty weak. I've recorded 34 minutes, and I don't know how much longer it's got left. But I'm recording at a very high setting. If it dies, we'll just keep going on Periscope and cut that video in. Now they told me it had like 100 minutes of battery life. It certainly has not been anywhere near that. Maybe it's like 100 minutes at like 4K or something. I think that would be very depressing if it was that limited. Because my walks are usually much longer than that. Maybe it's because I've got this adapter in it with the Wi-Fi turned on. That could be it. Maybe that's sucking down the battery. <sighs> We're gonna go up 17th Street here.
God, this traffic is a nightmare up here. Hmm. I wonder what happens if I take it out. I don't know if you, I don't think you can put an external battery pack on it. I could probably put a charger. Yeah, I'm getting like, oh, let's see if, I don't know what happens if I take out this like Wi-Fi adapter pack. Let's see if it cuts out the video. So hang on a second, guys. We're trying something. Oh, crap. Well, that didn't happen. The microphone got disconnected. Ah. So, when you take off the external battery pack, or the external thing, the microphone is disconnected. Hmm. So, hopefully I don't have to switch over to the Periscope audio. So that's what that does. Interesting limitation. Anyway, we're still learning, still learning. Sure, I'm going to do the audio if that doesn't work. Rent is very expensive in this neighborhood. Uh, like a one-bedroom place will be two or three thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars for a new place. No, three thousand for a new place, maybe. Twenty-five hundred. The problem is, uh, I make really long videos. Really long videos. So, I need all the battery time I can get. Uh, uh, busy with ours up. Got some money. Ah, can I ask you a question? Do you have any money? No. I don't carry cash. I haven't carried cash in a long time. Cut over this side of the street. So we need to get over to the side street here. Ah. So this is an area known as DuPont Circle. This is actually a pretty trendy area. It was originally the homosexual area of DC, but it's now sort of more mixed. As gentrification. As they were originally the first gentrifiers, and now they've been gentrified. I've not been mugged. Knock on wood. Though I do know several periscopers who have. Um, it's a bit crazy. So there's one more batch of embassies I wanted to show you. we got to get over this side street. That is one funky tree. I think that's like a Kamala Harris Christmas tree. She's like the angel at the top. Yeah, no doubt where this neighborhood stands. Howard University is about 10 blocks away from here. That's where she went to school. Okay, I'm gonna cut over because... Well, it should, there, it's in the next street. The street I wanted to run into should have dissected this street or crossed over somewhere here. I'll go one more block. 
I think there's a couple embassies up here. Porta potties for the homeless. Even have a washing station. Ooh. Oh man. That's pretty foul. That smell. The smell is pretty foul. Are there jobless? Yeah, quite a few. Quite a few of people out of work. They're renovating that building. Tents are legal? Uh, kind of, I guess. I don't think... Like, you're not supposed to camp in a park, but they don't really say anything if you camp. They don't really say anything. They just kind of let you have it. If you get, like, two take over the sidewalks, then they come and sweep them away. They have this sort of... The city government has this love-hate relationship with homeless people, I think. And they try to help them, but then at times they get like, well, just get out of here. It's just kind of weird. Whew. So we should see a few more embassies down here somewhere. Find what? Work? <laughs> My YouTube videos are actually making quite a bit of money. So I'll just make videos and make money that way. It's amazing how lucrative a viral video is. Generally, they say that if you get a million views, you get 2,000, somewhere between two and 5,000 US dollars. So, okay, what do we got here? Back to the embassies. Hello, Turkey, we just missed, we were there. This is Grenada. Oh, wow, Grenada. There's a bunch over here. Granada. This is, I don't know what embassy this is. Embassy of Rwanda. Oh, that's the Rwandan embassy. And this is the embassy of Kingdom Aswanti? I don't even know what country that is. Aswanti? There's an ambassador's card. See the license plate 001? That's an ambassador. The D stands for diplomat, and then there's a two-letter code for the country. This is Eritrea, Embassy of Eritrea. And what do we got here? Fund for American Studies. That's not an embassy. That for there, is that Nicaragua? I think it is. Or is that what that one of the Nicaragua's around here? I always thought that was Nicaragua. But then I think, yeah. I think the Sandinistas sold the embassy like a day before they lost power and took the money. <laughs> and then I guess is that Nicaragua flag? Mm -hmm. The Russians have a very large embassy complex because the Russian staff all live at the embassy in a diplomatic residence. So the Russians and like also Chinese and a few other governments, all of their staff are basically required to live on embassy grounds. They don't rely on what's called host country support. So like the American embassy in Russia has Russian janitors working there. Yeah, this is Nicaragua. This is the consulate of Nicaragua. But those countries rely on their own nationals to do basic tasks. So they have a lot of people. Fun for American Studies again. 
I don't know what that is all about. And this is Embassy of the Republic of Belarus. This is Belarus. That is Belarus. Belarus Embassy. Country in political turmoil. Have you been to China? Uh, yeah, I have lived in China. I lived in Hong Kong for like 10 years. <laughs> so I'm actually a permanent resident of China. I have permanent residence in Hong Kong. This is the German Historical Institute. I don't know what that is. Woodbury Blair Mansion. Mm. Another embassy here. Namibia. This is the Namibian embassy. Cool. Oh, what's that blue flag with like one more embassy? Oh, I was from Washington. I lived in Hong Kong for 10 years. And I come back. That red flag. Oh, God. Is that Moldova? I can't remember. Red flag with a simple. God, it's cold. Why should we? It's not cold. It's just when the wind blows, it's cold. It's really cold. <sighs> Ooh, so cold. I don't speak Russian. Nupa Ruski. There are some beautiful old buildings here. Guys, what's this one? The blue with the black flag? I don't know what that is. <sighs> I can do a little bit of Chinese, like ordering lunch, getting a hamburger, telling someone uh, my personal feelings about their mother's ancestry. Republic of Botswana. So that's Botswana. I've been to Russia. Botswana. This is, look at this, is one of those African countries. They got like, like AK-47 on their, on their flag or something. Mozambique. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mozambique. And that one is, I don't know what that flag is. That's just some law firm. And that's a think tank. Oh, there. Oh, we were asked. There's Jamaica. Russian is hard. Jamaican embassy is right there. Chinese is hard, too. Anything without, like, the alphabet that you're used to is hard. Because, you know, it's kind of a binary thing. Yeah, it was Botswana. Yeah, we did, did tag that. They had the name on it, thank God. So we saw Jamaica. Oh god, it's getting windy. Well, in Hong Kong, you have to remember English is the, one of the official languages of Hong Kong. So you can live perfectly fine in Hong Kong speaking nothing but English. The street signs are in English, the cops speak English, the pizza people speak English. It's rare that you find someone who doesn't speak English in Hong Kong. So this is Argentina Embassy. That's just like one of their missions. This must also be an Argentinian embassy building. Yep. Ooh. You have a Hong Kong girlfriend? That's cool. So I think the battery life of the Osmo is going to be about 80 minutes. And we're at minute 75 or something. So the Osmo is about to go bye-bye. But we'll continue the periscope because that's working off the iPhone's battery. And it'll go a bit longer. Do I have a Hong Kong girlfriend? No, I'm married with two kids. I'm old. Though if you look at my Instagram, 
I encourage you to look at my Instagram, Penguin6. I actually put up a funny story of what it's like in Hong Kong <laughs> in my dreams. Hong Kong has four women for every three men. Yeah, four women for every three men in Hong Kong between the ages of like 20 and 30. So if you're a single guy and have not been to Hong Kong, I mean, seriously, what's your problem? Why haven't you done that? <laughs> I have boys, two boys. They're in uh, middle and high school. No. No, Donna. Vietnam? I have, not, well, I have not been to Vietnam. I do want to go. I, we actually were planning a trip to Vietnam once and then something came up. Uh, it's only about a two hour flight, an hour and a half from Hong Kong to get to Vietnam. So, I mean, we were to the point of like booking a hotel and then I think a soccer tournament came up in like Singapore. My kids had a youth soccer tournament in Singapore, so instead of going to Vietnam, we decided to go to Singapore. I know that sounds ridiculous, but like my kids travel soccer in Hong Kong. We had like trips to Bangkok, trips to Singapore, Taiwan. That was just youth soccer, Shanghai. My kid had a really spoiled life. Like his field trip to Beijing, they stayed in like a five-star hotel, you know, with room service. That was like the school field trip. Yeah, it is not very expensive there. Mm. Oh boy. Hmm. So we've hit like 81 minutes on the DJ up the Osmo pocket. How many miles do I do? My, um, it's up there. Uh, an okay day is about five miles, four to five miles. A good day is six to eight or 10. When I was in Hong Kong, I was regularly doing 15, even 20 mile days, just staying fit. But uh, it's a lot harder to do that here in the US. So my buddy, <laughs> this is a strip club here on the right. My buddy played professional rugby in England. He was like six foot eight, 260 pounds. And he applied for a job as a bouncer at the strip club. And they told him he was too small to work as a bouncer. <laughs> I'm like, what? There are homeless people here and there. Um, most of them seem to be in tents and camps down by parks and stuff. Not so much in this neighborhood, this part of the neighborhood. 
And we're gonna have to go uphill for a while. Consulate General of Bolivia. Hmm. Um, yeah, they can't pay for a house, but I think a lot of them have either substance abuse issues or mental illness issues. There are some people who simply cannot afford housing, but there are a lot of others who have other problems, other demons they're dealing with. And it's tough to sort out how to fix, how to help all of them. The rent is too damn high. <laughs> Whew, I wanted to get here before the Osmo died, so I was hoofing it up a little bit. This is the Hilton Hotel in Washington, D.C. Or as it's known to the locals, the Hinckley Hilton. For this was the hotel where John Hinckley attempted to assassinate Ronald Reagan. So you see this... Uh, this garage facility down here. This was built after the assassination so that VIP guests could have a secure entrance in and out of the building. But let's go across the street here. There's a door behind this thing now. So there's a door back here, a private that goes into a VIP area. Hinkley, Hinkley was standing right over here, yeah? Reagan, Reagan came out, Reagan came out of the door, waved to the crowd. Hinkley, where I'm standing right now, he shot four or five bullets, six bullets, I think, hit the press secretary, hit a policeman, hit a Secret Service agent, and hit the presidential limousine. The bullet on the limousine sketched off into Ronald Reagan's under his arm. The limos then just took off up that road, turned left to head to the White House. While they were checking the president, he started coughing up really frothy red blood, and they knew that his lung had been, and they knew that his lung had been damaged. Ah, oh, the Osmo has died. Anyway, they knew that the president needed emergency care immediately, so they diverted. Rather than going back to the White House, as was their protocol to get him safe, they decided to go straight to GW Hospital which is only about 10 blocks away from here. They ran over to GW Hospital. Reagan got out of the car, waved to the TV cameras, walked through the door, and immediately collapsed onto the floor. Secret Service picked him up, threw him on a gurney, and he was rushed into surgery. Reagan's last words before he was put under anesthesia is he looked up at the doctors and he said, I hope you're all Republicans. The doctors who were actually Democrats looked down at Mr. Reagan and said, Mr. President, today we are all Republicans. So he was taken, taken well care of. All right, let me uh, tie my shoe here for a second. Oh. Okay, guys. Whew, hello. So the DJI Osmo has run out of battery after about 85 minutes of filming. Not, not bad. You take off the Osmo microphone. It's hanging on me right here. So that was the DJI Osmo microphone. Whew. And now we're gonna continue just with Periscope, Twitter. So I'm sorry about the image quality dropping to 720. Uh, that's a limitation of the Periscope software. But we got a few more things to see, yeah? Including my absolute favorite house in all of Washington, D.C. Another presidential helicopter coming out. I'm not sure how long it takes to charge. I've never charged it. <laughs> It's brand new. There it goes. This video will be on YouTube under my username Penguin6 later this evening. 
you guys can relive this hike in 4k hopefully i hope to have the full download and high quality video what's this embassy red and white it's not poland is it no. oh that's the russian trade rep this is malta this is the embassy of malta and that's the russian trade federation <laughs> okay picked up another one on our embassy spotter tour i have totally lost track of how many embassies we've seen it's got to be about two or three dozen when you think Whew. let's cut across here there's actually a smattering of embassies back here but it's a lot of walking and you only see like one or two but we'll, we'll see a couple Okay, sorry about that. That building in front of us is the old Chinese embassy. And they just renovated it. And I think it's going to be like a diplomatic residence for Chinese diplomats. I'm not sure, but it could be. Um, yeah, some, I mean, most of, unfortunately, most U.S. embassies overseas now represent now look like military grade bunkers with rpg fencing bulletproof windows yada yada i mean our embassies overseas have long since lost the sort of diplomatic charm of beautiful old buildings and become sort of fortress america type things are there chinese officials in there probably i i don't know to be honest this building was i know when they were fixing this building it was done by a chinese company and I knew this is the old Chinese embassy. This is the Algerian Chancery, Algeria. So I think that's a Chinese diplomatic residence. I'm not sure, though. It's rare that a Chinese company would do business in the United States without having, like, diplomatic protection or something. Uh, what flag is that? Green, yellow, and red. Uh, what is that? Can't even see. Embassy of Benin. That's the Benin Embassy. I had to put my glasses on. <laughs> Getting old. Well, this is for rent. That is the Portuguese ambassador's residence. So a Portuguese ambassador lives there. And this, folks, is my favorite house in all of Washington, D.C. Right here, this house. Good timing on that question. It's a Chinese construction company. This, folks, is the French ambassador's residence. The French ambassador to the United States is given this house by his government. I should note the U.S. ambassador to France has an equally amazing house. Let's get under the fence, yeah? 
So there it is, folks, the French ambassador's residence, my favorite house in Washington, D.C. I've never been inside. I haven't even seen pictures of it inside. But it does look glorious, doesn't it? Grand. Ah, I think that's the Mexican ambassador's house across the street. This is Calorama Circle. This is a very expensive neighborhood of Washington, D.C. In fact, the most expensive. You're looking at, I believe, the Thai Embassy? Thailand? You could live there, you think? There's a lot of vacuum. Take a lot of vacuuming, though. <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to go back this way, but I decided I might as well just. It's probably quicker to get back to my house to go this way. He's got a big yard, too, or she, he or she. I think the French ambassador is a he. Rents back here go between 18 and 30,000 U.S. a month. Yeah, you yeah, have several maids. Whole Downton Abbey setup, I think. Ah, so uh, there's a British flag there, but I don't think that's the ambassador's place. Down on this street and to the left is Barack Obama's house, the back entrance. It's blocked by police cars, too. So there's a police cruiser down there. But if you go down there and turn left, you'll run into Barack Obama's place. Hello, Turkey. We're actually in the Turkish ambassador. Turkish embassy is just up ahead. We've done one gigantic loop on our hike. Iceland or Faroe Islands? It's in Iceland, right? This is the Iceland ambassador's place. He's got his Amazon packages just sitting there. <laughs> 
time? I don't even know. Oh yeah. My watch is doing weird stuff. Three thirty-five. So that house there, that was Ivanka Trump's house and Jared Kushner, that's where they lived. It's now available for rent at 18,000 US dollars a month. 18,000 US dollars per month. They moved to New York. They probably did, but I think they probably still keep their property here. Same is true with the Clintons. The Clintons moved to New York, but they have a property here in Washington. Or maybe they moved to California. Weren't they doing like a movie deal? I'm not sure. The uber wealthy multiple, multiple houses is normal. So this is the Russian GRU, FSB, whatever. The Russian defense attache's house is straight ahead. Um, this is the embassy of Guyana. The UAE, I think, is up in a different embassy sector. There's this area up north by Van Ness Street that has like a bunch of big embassies. I think they're up there. I'm not sure. So this is the Russian <coughs> Russian spy center. Barack Obama lives back there behind that police car. It's about six blocks. I don't know what that flag is. There you can see the Russian flag. The Russian defense attache's office. This is where like American traders have like shown up here with like briefcase full of documents to like sell to Russians. And the FBI was like, what's going on? Yeah, we are watching the Mali situation in Russia. It's a bit crazy. Russian yeah, military people live there. So the Turkish embassy is right there. You can see the Turkish flag flying on that building down there. That was Oman? Oh, okay, good call. You guys have been in the Japanese embassy, as we saw earlier, is across the street. Turkey, Japan, I uh, forgot, it was at Benin or something. Spanish mission, this is the Muslim center, the Islamic center. How, you know, it's funny, the Israeli embassy is actually surrounded by a number of uh, Middle Eastern embassies who aren't exactly on the best of terms. I think they just don't bother each other. <laughs> Probably the best way. But as there is an old saying, politics makes strange bedfellows, you know? So you have people living. I mean, Ivanka Trump and Obama live next to each other with a Russian spy center in between the two of them. Go figure. Jed? What's that? Is that like a, a saying? There's the Italian embassy again. These embassies are paid for by their nations. That's why like some nations, they can only offend like a, they have like a WeWork office, you know, because they don't have the money to have a full-fledged embassy. This is the Rock Creek Parkway. This is a national park in the middle of Washington, D.C. God, it's beautiful, isn't it? I tell you what, guys, I'm tired. Woo! I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. This will be on YouTube later tonight. Uh, thanks to all of you for sticking with us through this, all this big embassy tour. Also, check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Penguin6, Twitch, the Penguin6. And I will catch you later on. Oh, the place where the Muslim Center is, Islamic Center. Oh, okay, I learned a new word. Thank you very much for that, and I hope you have a good day. Good night.